Welcome to Making a Murder Rubber Ducky YouTube channel. All right, guys, time to start our daily ma'am reading. And today we're going over part nine of the Casio Investigative Reports, pages 81 through 90. Let's get started. Page 81. Type of Activity Supplemental Report, Date of Activity 11.05.05. Reporting Officer, Lieutenant Kelly Sipple. At approximately 2.30 p.m. on Saturday, 11.05.05, I, Lieutenant Sipple of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, arrived at the intersection of Avery Road and State Highway 147 to assist with the Calumet County Sheriff's Department and the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department in a missing person incident. On 10.31.05, a female by the name of Teresa Halbach had disappeared. Teresa is a resident of Calumet County. On the morning of Saturday, 11.05.05, friends of Teresa were searching the Avery Auto Salvage Yard, where they located her motor vehicle off the southwest quadrant of the property. Officers from both the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department and Calumet County Sheriff's Department responded to the scene. Shortly after arriving at Avery property, I was teamed up with two Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department investigators to check the outbuildings of the property for Teresa Halbach. At this point, we believed there was a possibility that Teresa was still alive. We began searching the outbuildings on the Avery property, and we searched with several garages located in the southwest corner of the property. The first garage we searched would have been a red garage, and we found a snowmobile and a Suzuki Samurai motor vehicle. We also found numerous 22 shell casings located on the floor of the garage. We were unable to locate Teresa Halbach in the building. We then moved east towards a light blue home and a light blue garage. We entered the garage and it was here that we found a carcass of a deer hanging. Also, we were unable to find Teresa Halbach. Behind the light blue house, we observed four garbage cans. Two of the garbage cans contained clothing. One had what appeared to be a shovel sticking into it with a pair of men's underwear hanging from the shovel. We also observed a reddish cloth material in the second garbage can. At this same residence, there was a small tool shed or barn. We opened that building up and again were unable to locate Teresa Halbach. We continued east into the main compound area of the property where we searched a large red pole building. We entered the north end of the pole building on the east side and realized that the interior of the pole building was split into three large rooms. We traveled through a door in the northeast corner of the north room, out the west side, and into the fenced-in area of the compound. We observed two other buildings and multiple motor vehicles. The one, page 82 building was an old metal barn located along the north side of the compound where we searched and did not locate the missing person that being Teresa Halbach. We then moved to the southwest corner of the compound and searched a large pole building which appeared to be fairly new. Again we did not locate Teresa Halbach. We searched motor vehicles that were in the compound area and again we were unable to locate Teresa. We then moved through a gate on the southeast side of the compound and into a lot area above the actual salvage yard. There we moved along the south side of the red building and entered another room in the red building through an east door on the south side of the building. Here we located a large case W20. This is a large caterpillar type vehicle or bulldozer type vehicle with forks on it which appears to use, be used to move motor vehicles within the property. We exited back out the, the east door we entered and moved north along the building and now entered the third room within the red pole building. This room appeared to contain a large quantity of metal parts and again we were unable to locate Teresa Hawbach within the red pole building and its three compartmentalized rooms. We then entered a shop which appears to be used as a building that stored transmissions and engine parts in the back half. The building had an old office area on the north end along with a workshop in the northeast 
I'm sorry, northwest corner and a wood burner. This building was searched and we were unable to locate Teresa. We then moved out of that building and to the east where we entered a newer building with Avery, Autos, Chuck, and Earl listed on the front. Prior to entering that building, we came across a yellow Dodge Neon with a Wisconsin plate 343JVF. In the back seat of this vehicle, we located what appeared to be an unloaded 30 on 6 rifle. After verifying that the rifle was empty, we then entered the main office area to search for Teresa. Upon entering the office area, we observed a missing person poster with Teresa's name and information and her picture on it posted in the office. <clears throat> We then searched the office area and moved into the main shop. We cleared the shop and were unable to locate Teresa. We were unable to locate Teresa in any of the buildings at this point. We also checked a two-car garage located behind a residence in the northeast corner where the shop was located. In this garage, we located a golf cart and a passenger vehicle. Once again, we were unable to locate Teresa Halbach. It should be noted that other teams already on search were searching the residence on the property for Teresa Hobbach. I, Lieutenant Sippel, returned to the command post where we began to make plans for searching the property further. Our intent was to search for Teresa Hobbach in hopes that we would find. Page 83. Her Alive. I then began to work on scheduling officers to come onto the property to begin searching on Sunday, 11.06.05. Lieutenant Kelly Sipple, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 84. Type of activity conversation with Detective Lieutenant James Link. Date of activity, 11.05.05. Reporting Officer, Investigator John Deering. Documents generated, none. On Saturday, 11.05.05, .05, at 14.57 hours, some time after arriving back from the Earl Avery residence, I, Dietering, was contacted by Lt. James Link, Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department. Link indicated that a member of the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department had contact with Stephen Avery's fiance, identified as Jody Stachyskowski. Jody told the individual from law enforcement she spoke with that in telephone conversations she had with Stephen Avery. Stephen told her that Bobby Dassey had had contact with Teresa Halbach after Stephen did. It should be noted that Jody Stajaskowski is currently housed in the Manitowoc County County Jail, that Barb Yonda is Stephen Avery's sister, and that Bobby Dassey is Barb Yonda's son. Link went on to indicate that Jody had visited with Stephen at the jail on Tuesday, and at that time, according to Stajaskowski, Stephen told Jody that Teresa Halbach had come to photograph the car, and that was all. According to Link, Jody Stajaskowski indicated that on Friday, contact was made between Jody and Stephen, and at that time, Stephen indicated that Bobby had seen Teresa after Stephen had. Investigation continues. John Dietering, Investigator, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 85. Type of activity, assist in missing person case. Date of activity, Saturday, 11.05.05. Start of service at 1500 hours. End of service at 22.30 hours. Reporting officer, Deputy Dan Korcharski. On 11.05.05 at approximately 1,500 hours, I, Deputy Dan Karcharski of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, was contacted by Lieutenant Bowie of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department to respond to State Highway 147 at Avery Road in Manitowoc County to assist in an investigation of a missing person. Upon arrival, I met with Lieutenant Sipple at the Calumet County Sheriff's Department at the command post that was set up on the property. Lieutenant Sippel ordered me to go with Detective Dave Remaker, badge number 278, from Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department and collect some evidence that was located earlier on the property. Detective Remaker and I went to an area on the driveway in front of the residence marked 12930A. 
Avery Road. I photographed the two pieces of evidence that were marked, a broken pair of glasses and a plastic part, and collected these two pieces. Detective Remaker and I returned to the command post for another assignment. Upon arrival at the command post, Lieutenant Sipple ordered me to go with a dog handler and a cadaver dog to search the junkyard portion of the property. The rest of my time on duty was spent in this search. The dog had interest in two spots in the junkyard, the intersection of the conveyor system in the southwest corner and the tall weeded area in the northwest corner of the lot. These areas I marked for further investigation. End of supplemental report incident number LCA 0511-0300213. Deputy Dan Kartransky, number 834, Calumet County, Sheriff's Department. Page 86, Type of Activity, Search Warrant Execution of Steve Avery's Residence, 12932 Avery Road. Date of Activity, 110505, Reporting Officer, Investigator Gary Stryer. On Saturday, 110505, at 3.48 p.m., Investigator Gary Stryer of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, along with Detective Dave Remaker of the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, did conduct initial entry into the residence of 12932 Avery Road, residence of Steve A. Avery, male, white, date of birth, 070962. Detective Remaker did open the storm door to the residence, whereupon Investigator Stryer did observe a red blood-like substance located on the edge of the storm door by the door handle. Detective Remaker did find the door locked. Investigator Stryer and Detective Remaker walked around the trailer in a counterclockwise direction, looking for a door or window that was unlocked. Investigators returned to the front door, where Detective Remaker knocked on the door, announcing, Sheriff's Department, search warrant. Investigators waited approximately 15 seconds. Detective Remaker made forced entry by kicking the door three times. On the third kick, the door opened, and Detective Remaker and Investigator Stryer entered the residence. Upon entering the residence, Investigator Stryer announced, Please search warrant! After a search for Teresa Halbach in the residence, investigators left the residence at approximately 3.58 p.m. Investigator Stryer, along with Detective Remaker, did enter a locked, detached garage located on the property of 12932 Avery Road at 4.03 p.m. Investigator Stryer checked the door to the detached garage and found it to be locked. Investigator Stryer then forced open the door with his shoulder. Investigator Stryer struck the door once. The door opened and the investigators then entered the garage. After checking the interior for Teresa Halbach and not finding Teresa, investigators did exit the garage at 4.06 p.m. Deputy Schultz and Deputy Mazuzak of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department remained on scene outside the residence. Investigator Gary Stryer, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 87. Type of Activity. Contact with Marionette County Sheriff's Department Detective Sievert. Date of Activity, 110505. Reporting Officer, Investigator John Dietering. Documents generated, none. On Saturday, 110505, at 1607 hours, I. Dietering was contacted by the Marionette County Sheriff's Department, believed to be Detective Sievert. I'd placed a call to Marionette County at the request of other officers on scene in an attempt to determine whether Dolores Avery would give voluntary consent for officers to search her premises on the Avery compound on Avery Road. The Marionette County representative I spoke with indicated that Dolores would not consent to a search of her residence without her being present. Investigation continues. John Dietering, investigator, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 88. Type of activity. Sweep of area by Great Lakes Search and Rescue Canine Incorporated representatives. 
Date of activity, 11.05.05. Reporting officer, investigator John Dietering. Documents generated, none. On Saturday, 11.05.05, at approximately 16.07 hours, I. Dietering did escort the following representatives of Great Lakes Search and Rescue Canine Incorporated to an area located near an automobile crusher within the Avery Salvage Yard. Robert W. Kramer, his dog Trace, and Julie A. Kramer, her dog Brutus. It had been learned through an interview with Earl Avery that Stephen Avery was the individual responsible for crushing the last vehicle, which was still in place in the crusher. It was my understanding that the vehicle in the crusher was probably crushed on Friday, 110305. Julie Kramer and Brutus did check the vicinity around the crusher as well as the inside of the crusher. Brutus did not react in any way to any material on the crusher. It should be noted that I was advised by Julie Kramer that Brutus is a cadaver dog and will only react to human remains and human blood. Kramer and Brutus, Special Agent Fassbender, Special Agent Hunsader from State of Wisconsin Department of Criminal Investigation, DCI, Detective Jacobs, and I did take a route south from the crusher and then went along the fence tree line that Earl. Page 89. Avery had identified as being the property between the Avery property and the Rendette Quarry. The last row of cars on the Avery property did contain the RAV4 that belonged to Teresa Halbach. Julie Kramer and Brutus went ahead of the rest of us, and as Brutus passed by the north side of the Red 4, which had been covered by a blue tarp in order to preserve possible fingerprint evidence, as it appeared to be getting ready to rain, Brutus made a brute left turn movement and stuffed his head under the tarp. He then came back to his handler, Julie Kramer, and began to bark. Julie Kramer advised us that this was, in fact, an alert indicating that Brutus had detected either human remains or human blood. At 1620 hours, I did observe representatives of the Wisconsin State Crime Laboratory Field Unit approach Rab 4 parked on the south property line of the Avery property. At 1633 hours, Hans Hader Jacobs and I, along with Julie Kramer and Brutus, did leave the Avery property and proceed onto the property immediately south of the Avery Auto Salvage Yard. It should be noted that Sergeant Brian Mack of the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department had obtained permission from the owner of the property, Mr. Randat, to search any and all areas that were deemed pertinent. While Brutus did show interest in several areas in the quarry or gravel pit area immediately south of the Avery's Auto Salvage Yard property, Brutus did not factually alert on anything in the area. At 1713 hours, Julie Kramer and Brutus did revisit the crusher area. Once again, Brutus did not alert. Brutus was secured in the van, which Robert and Julie Kramer had arrived in at 1714 hours. At 1726 hours, Julie Kramer and her canine Brutus, Lieutenant Sipple of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, Detective Remaker from Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department, Special Agent Hunsader from DCI, and I proceeded to a burn barrel area near the Stephen Avery residence. It was decided that Julie and Brutus would go through Stephen Avery's residence in an attempt to determine whether Brutus would alert to anything within the dwelling. At 1735 hours, Detective Remaker, Julie Kramer, Brutus, and I did enter the Stephen Avery residence. We did exit the residence at 1740 hours. I personally did not observe any alerts from the canine. Investigation continues. John Dietering, Investigator, Calumet County Sheriff's Department. Page 90. Type of activity. Interview of Bobby A. Dassey. Date of activity, 11.05.05. Reporting officer, investigator John Dietering. Documents generated, one-page written statement. On Saturday, 11.05.05 at 1753 hours, I. Dietering, in the company of Manitowoc County Detective Dennis Jacobs, did interview the following individual at a roadblock situated at the intersection of State Highway 147 and Jambo Creek Road in the town of Gibson, Manitowoc County. Bobby A. Dassey. 
Prior to asking Bobby A. Dassey any questions, he was advised that he was free to leave, was not under arrest, and did not have to answer any questions at any time. I did have Bobby Dassey open his door to prove to him that the door was not locked and that he was, in fact, free to go. Bobby advised me that his father is Peter Dassey and that his mother is Barb Yonda. He stated he does live with his mother at the Avery Road address. He stated that he lived on Avery Road since 2001. And prior to that, he lived on Preston Road in Whitelaw for approximately eight years. Bobby states he works third shift at Hamilton Manufacturing in Two Rivers and is normally home by 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Bobby indicated that on Monday, 10.31.05, he woke up between 1,400 and 1,430 hours. He stated that he looked out his family's mobile home window and observed a little SUV, which he described as being either teal or blue in color. He stated he observed the vehicle stop and a female exit the unit and photograph a maroon van, which his mother is attempting to sell. He stated that after the photographer had finished photographing the van, he observed her walking towards the residence of Stephen Avery. This residence is located immediately west of Dessie's home. He stated that she was seen walking towards the porch. He stated the photographer spent approximately five minutes photographing the vehicle. Bobby stated that he left for deer bow hunting at approximately 1445 to 1500 hours. He stated that the teal vehicle was still there when he left. He stated that he arrived home at dark or shortly. All right, guys, we're going to stop right there. That concludes um, part nine of the Casio investigation reports. Now let's go ahead and start a review. All right, you guys, we're going to back up to page 81, and this is a supplemental report, and it is 11.05.05, and it is Lieutenant Kelly Sipple. And what I want to cover is, um, just to make some notes here, so they are going through the light blue home and light blue garage here, doing a search for Teresa, and that would be the Dassey residence, and he reports that he found a carcass of a deer hanging. So that tells you on the 5th, we have a deer hanging in the garage. But what was really important was, it just kind of like threw me a little bit, I guess. It was behind the light blue house, they find four garbage cans. Two of the garbage cans had clothes in them. One of them had a shovel sticking into it with a pair of men's underwear hanging from the shovel. So somebody that wears underwear isn't wearing them. And why are they hanging on the shovel? It's like, did they shed off their clothes and then use the shovel naked? Just asking. Um, and then they observe a reddish cloth material in the second garbage can. So we need to pay attention. Is this reddish cloth anything? Is it just the cloth is red or is it a stained cloth that's red? You know, these are questions we need to know. And then on page 82, um, they're going through the buildings there on the Avery um, office area and stuff, the, the compound as they called it, and they find the case W20, um, the large caterpillar, it's the front end loader, and they talk about the forks on it, and that this is used to move motor vehicles within the property. And you can see that they've tucked it nicely into the building. Now, we've done a little bit of research on this, and we found out that a master key to one of these, um, from what our research revealed, can start almost any one of them. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that every brand is the same, and uh, don't quote me on that. But in theory, that is the theory, that if you had the key to one of your own, but you wanted it to appear like you, somebody else's, your master key should in theory, start this one. And then I want to move on down the, the sheet here. And they talk about the Avery Auto's Chuck and Earl office part. And before they're entering, they see a yellow Dodge Neon. And in the back seat is a 30 odd 6 rifle. It's not loaded, but it's laying on the seat. And then when they get in the office, there's a missing person poster of Teresa. Now I get it. They're trying to help out. They're trying to promote it. Somebody has brought that to them and asked them to hang it up, and they do. 
But it's just so strange finding that vehicle and the gun laying there and the girl missing. Just unsettling. And on page 84, um, it talks about James Link. So Lieutenant Link makes his appearance here and uh, he contacted Deering. So he kind of volunteers for the job. Link does. Now he just got depositioned in a $36 million lawsuit where he now it's in his best interest if Stephen Avery is found guilty or at least a suspect. So that provides an automatic conflict of interest, but it's not even acknowledged at this point. Now, Link's talking about Jody, who is Stephen Avery's fiance. And Jody reports that already Stephen, in the very beginning, has told her that Bobby Dassey had had contact with Teresa Halbach after Stephen did. So he actually says that twice here. If you look down at the bottom, and at that time, Stephen indicated that Bobby had seen Teresa after Stephen had. And on page 85, where this is a big one, you guys. This is so big for me. Um, do you guys remember when, you know, through this research, we have learned that um, maybe we haven't got to it in this part yet in the castle, but in other ones, Teresa Halbach's glasses were collected from her bedroom at her residence for, for evidence. And then they're brought back to the Avery salvage yard there where they have the evidence storage trailer well apparently they've made their way out of there somehow okay listen to this it's very misleading because they make it sound like and they do record it in evidence that is found on Stephen Avery's property but it isn't so pay close attention to this address and and what's going on so we're talking about Dan Kercharski and Detective Rimmaker. And they went to an area on the driveway in front of the residence marked 12930 A Avery Road. So I've jumped ahead um, to page 181 where it references whose residence is 12930 A Avery Road. And it states here we were also to check the safes in Steve Avery or Stephen's sister Barbara's residence at 12930 Avery Road. So now we are back onto our original page that we're working on, which is page 85. Now we know that this is Barb Yonda's residence. This is Bobby Dassey's driveway. And Bobby Dassey's driveway is found on the other side of the Yonder residence. So that, that puts a house in between where these glasses are found and Stephen Avery's residence. So what I've done is I've actually paused for a minute and I brought up what they used in the trial. And let's grab us a pen here. I want to show you guys something. We're going to use red. So this is right here, Stephen Avery's driveway. And this is where we always thought that they found these glasses but over here is this garage and this is where they find the glasses or even here because it's at the garage is really close to where they're describing these glasses so Teresa Halbach's glasses are found way over here. Now let's switch colors and let's talk about something for a minute. So see the red van right here? So Teresa would have pulled her vehicle right here. She would have got out and she would have taken a picture of the vehicle and then she would have returned to her vehicle. And I have a question. At what point does Teresa get over to here? How does that work, you guys? So was Teresa over in Bobby Dassey's driveway? And 
And then I want to go down a little bit further on the same page. And we talk about the dog hitting in two spots in the junkyard. But yet they talk about the conveyor system. Now the conveyor system is not in the Avery salvage yard. The conveyor system is the system that rolls the gravel along. So it gets crushed and it gets churned up on this conveyor system and that dumps it right into the dump trucks. And that is in the quarry. So when they're talking about the intersection of the conveyor system in the southwest corner and the tall weeded area in the northwest corner of the lot where the dogs show interest, they are not talking about the salvage yard. They are talking about the quarry. And just to further um, confirm that those glasses were not found at Stephen Avery's residence, you can see here that Stephen Avery's residence is 12932 Avery Road. And we're going to scroll back up here and look at that address. It's completely different. It's 12930A. So there you have it, you guys. On page 86, which follows 85, you get the confirmation that it is not Stephen Avery's residence that they find Teresa Halbach's broken glasses at. It is at Bobby Dassey's driveway. And then let's jump to 87 and just take a note here. Um, not that it matters because he did it anyway, but Dolores did not consent to search of a residence without her being present. You know, wisdom comes with age, right? And on page 88, um, here it, it's so clear. You guys, if Stephen Avery obviously has crushed a vehicle, he knows how. And then it looks like that the vehicle that he did crush was on Friday, 11.03.05. Now, we have that quarry going until very late at night. He could have snuck down there and crushed that Rev4, but he didn't. And he had the opportunity to do it. Now, Brutus did not re react in any way to any material on the crusher, in the crusher, by the crusher, nothing. And Brutus is going to react because of, of the cadaver dog. is going to react, um, according to Julie Kramer, to human remains and human blood only. And on page 89, here's where Brutus does react. He makes a turn to the left stuffs his hand under the tarp, um, comes back to Julie and began to bark. And she said, yes, that the dog had alerted to either human remains or human blood underneath the tarp. And then just to make note here, we do already at 4.20 PM have Wisconsin State Crime Laboratory Field Unit. They're approaching the RAB4, which is parked on the south property line of Avery. And then we'll go down here a little bit and you can see that they are indeed talking about the quarry when they were talking about the conveyor because here's where we actually get it more in context where Brian, uh, Brian Knack of Manitowoc County Sheriff's Department he talked to Mr. Randa and gained permission to search the area which is the Randa quarry and you can see here this is where Brutus has made interest in two areas, um, but did not factually alert on anything. And then Special Agent Hunsitter from DCI and um, I believe it was, yeah, John Dietering went over to the burn barrel area near Stephen Avery. Now if Stephen Avery's burn barrel had electronics in it or had bones in it or evidence, at what point did they not notice that on this day? And then I thought it was interesting that even though we know we have blood in the sink and we have blood around in Stephen's bathroom from him because he is he is actively bleeding um, when he's in the bathroom and leaves the blood, the dog does not alert on the blood that's in the house. So Julie Kramer takes Brutus through Steve Avery's residence and um, John Dietering notes... <clears throat> that the dog, the canine, didn't alert to anything. And then we'll just scroll down here to page 90 as we wrap up. 
and we end on a Bobby note, as if we haven't found out enough about Bobby and glasses at his driveway, broken glasses no less, that belong to Teresa Halbach. He has now noted that he works third shift and it's Hamilton Manufacturing and that he gets home about 6.30 in the morning. He also noted that from his family's mobile home window, he observed a little SUV. He described it as being teal or blue in color. You know, it's very similar to what Pam has described. But yet, Detective Tyson, in yesterday's read, said dark green five times. So we have a discrepancy in eyewitnesses here. And also, you see here that it is not Stephen that is actually attempting to sell the red van. He is selling it for Barb Yonda, his sister, which is Bobby Dassey's mother. And he states um, that the photographer had finished up for, uh, photographing the van. And then Bobby states he saw her walk towards the resident Steve Avery, towards the porch. And uh, he also stated that the photographer spent approximately five minutes photographing the vehicle. So I would like one of you to go stand at your window and watch your neighbor for five minutes. Time it. That's quite a while. You're actually very interested to stand there for the entire time and watch somebody else, you know, do some activity just to witness them. And then he states that he left deer bow hunting at approximately 2.45 to 3 o'clock um, and that he stated the teal vehicle was still there when he left and he didn't get home till dark. All right, guys, so that concludes our um basically our review of part nine. Thank you guys so much for joining me on our daily mam reading of the Casio. Um, that was part nine and I look forward to doing part 10 with you tomorrow. Thank you for your support as well. Um, bringing light and public awareness to both Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery who were wrongfully convicted is a good way to keep them safe. We know the world is watching and we're paying attention. And so with that, you guys, it's time. If you didn't do the crime, you shouldn't do the time. And thank you so much and you guys have a wonderful evening.